hours for sea cargo and 24 hours for air cargo. <coughs> so from customs, at least we are revamping the IceGate portal, which is going to be based on open uh, API specific, in AP, open API, where we will be exposing APIs for various other uh, uh, various other services, which are now currently happening through an EDI. And uh, you will have, we are planning to have a unified dashboard where one dashboard can give information about all regulatory uh, requirements in one go. So those are the key elements which we are going to do, but uh, uh, we will see how it works. I think there was an initial uh, consultation with all the stakeholders and that has been encouraging, but uh, we will see together. Other initiatives which go we are going to do in very near time is about making the bonds electronic complete end to end because one paper document which can't be replaced even after e sanchit is a legal document where we need some kind of a paper one. But of course we have found solution in consultation with law ministry and other uh, ministries. We are going to have an end to end automation of electronic bonds and coupled with a re-engineering Instead of transaction-wise bonds, it's going to be a one bond which is given annually, which can be used multi-purpose. So that is going to be a game changer and that reduces the paper which is being used in custom house. Of course, another one is a country of origin for which uh, international engagements are happening where we can have electronic uh, certificate of origin electronically so that there is no need for physical copy. And another other one is use of IoT in uh, all the things because a lot of discussions took place even among CFS operators to have a smart warehouse where we can have entire accountal in one electronic platform rather than to rely on the physical ones. So IoT is going to play a great role if you want to have an efficient clearances. And I talked about uh, uh, all the other three. So these are the ones which are in near time, but of course we will need support of all people. So we are one in the journey. So unless we join together, we are not going to achieve, let us say, our target of uh, NCA National Trade Facilitation. Thank you. That's what, uh, very wonderful, sir. Um, it is also the version 2, which is going to be very helpful. And it is also the other processes which are going to quicken. The clearances is very good. Now, what Mr. Vitalra said, what Andre said, and what Mr. Anand said, how does it come to us as a normal custom brokers? For that is Mr. Vineet Malhotra from Kali Logistics. He's the one who does all our softwares. And there are a lot of other software providers also. He's one among them. So he would put his perspective on uh, the clearances and the documentation process for the custom brokers. Thank you. So good afternoon. A little louder, please. Thank you. I know I am the last man standing between you and lunch, so I'll be rather short here. Okay. And I've got only 10 slides to look at, so please bear with me for that. Slides? Can I have slides, please? Okay, that's me. And we will look at the... Uh, we look at the digital platforms and how they are forming a backbone. I mean, and since morning and obviously in this session as well, we've been all talking about the fact that there are a plethora of these platforms, systems, and the fact that, you know, a lot of more needs to be done. Obviously, we looked at the fact that, you know, there is this custom system that we, we have, the fact that we have some ULIP, et cetera, et cetera, and there are several of those systems that we also provide. So how does this ecosystem look like and what's, what's going on? So some of them are listed here, you know, uh, I mean, uh, we did this survey to find out if you look at a platform and a platform to us, us, the definition is where several stakeholders come and engage and interact. You know, what is the current count of one or the other within the exim trade? The platforms which are used, you know, the common ones are obviously listed here, but the ones that are used in the country, any guesses here? Any guess? I mean, four or five I have listed, but any, anybody who can guess, saying that how many such platforms are already there? There's 72 of them, okay? 
and counting. In fact, if you just look at the fact that, you know, just around one element of transportation and the marketplaces around transportation, which is basically nothing but finding out the rates, finding out the booking, schedules, etc. Just on the road transport alone, there are 180 startups in the country who actually are offering one or the other. So essentially, what's going on is there's a quite a bit of work at different levels which is happening, and possibly there's time to look at how all of this connect. I think one of the most important initiatives is ULIP at this stage, uh, and obviously what it's trying to do is trying to build an underlying layer of information which could possibly come from all of these you know, sources or platforms, and thereafter the data is available for people to then use in a different fashion. Now there could be service providers who could possibly look at building some more apps and offering it to their customers, or alternatively you could use you know, as, as a provider in your own application to look at data and the way that you will make decisions out of it. But more importantly, what comes out is that these, all these platforms are there, fantastic. But what do they finally achieve? And what is the objective by which they come? Uh, there's been a lot of focus on the fact that they must bring in efficiency. Fantastic. You know, yes, it should. It should bring in efficiency, lower costs. I think, but what is also possibly not looked at, and that's where the IT is transformational and game changer, is to look at the fact that how it can actually, you know, uh, improve your business. I mean, a growth in business. So if you have data which is coming in, and you look at from commodity side, from customer side, and you have insights coming in, then essentially you could make much more powerful decisions in terms of how you would serve your customer, thereby either growing your business or making it more profitable. Efficiency is obviously spoken about, you know, obviously uh, with, with connected ecosystems, et cetera, the overall costs should also go down. And this is another aspect that, you know, whenever we've spoken to you know, to, to the fraternity, always the question has been, fantastic, you know, you, you guys give some solutions, but where is the bang for the buck? I invest X, what do I get out of it? Uh, and this is a difficult question to answer, because unless we've also done this pre and post analysis of saying that, you know, you were doing your business in a particular fashion, now you bring in the technology solution, and this is what we'll possibly achieve, and we measure it and, you know, we say, say so. So we've actually built a model internally to look at you know, how this could be all termed in terms of, rather than just you know, looking at from a you know, key performance area perspective, you also look at from a monetary perspective. So if you spend X, then can you get Y out of it? Or if you spend X, can I actually save delta X out of it, et cetera? The other element is obviously regulatory compliance, which is obviously not just with customs, with anything which is the rule of law, possibly these systems should be able to provide. You're also looking at industry initiatives. There's a lot of it which is basically happening. For example, uh, you know, very, very recently, uh, IMO has mandated a maritime single window to be there for all ports across the world. So some of these initiatives obviously must find, you know, something in these platforms that are available. And last but not the least is, is the environmental sustainability, which is what paperless is all about paperless, lesser diesel being used so that, you know, waiting time, dwell times of trucks goes down, or for that matter, you know, uh, typically on the air side as well as on the ocean side, you know, the overall environmental impact going down. So some of these elements are essentially the cornerstone or key performance areas which need to come out of it. And what we've also done internally is to look at if these are the key performance areas, then what are the key performance, you know, index? Uh, out of this, or indices are out of that. So we've also got about 32 of them, which we believe if platforms work properly, if people are collaborative, you know, working together, then some of those should definitely happen. Having said so, and since, uh, since morning, uh, we've also been hearing, uh, you know, different terminologies around technology. There is emerging technology, there is new technology, and then what we call as the deep tech. And let me give you a very simple formula to remember what deep tech, emerge tech, or new tech is all about. And it's called ABCD. And you know, it's very simple to, to you know, remember this. A would obviously stand for the artificial intelligence part. B is the blockchain. 
C is the collaboration, community, cloud, you know, whichever way you call it. And D is about all about data and overall digitization, which could also be, you know, look at the fact that from an infrastructure perspective, how drones would work. So if you have A, B, C, D, uh, what, we, uh, what I've tried to do here is, uh, instead of just looking at theoretical examples, these are examples that have been possibly, you know, this have been already done and within the country. So let's just very quickly look at some of these examples. The first example is the AI use case, and we've used this use case towards ensuring the overall, you know, on the air cargo side, truck dwell time goes down significantly. And obviously it uses several parameters by which those elements, you know, the overall dwell time goes down, the productivity at the terminal goes up, and so on. So this is something that already has been established, and it obviously is a, to, for the whole ecosystem, uh, you know, uh, essentially a great thing to have. The second element, and the E-Freight uh, e airwayable initiative from IATA has been there since 1970s. Uh, what we also saw a few years back, the challenge with that was that the smaller the player, smaller, you know, smaller forwarders, smaller brokers, essentially found it very difficult to participate in something like this. And you know, nobody wanted to also change their system. So obviously we use uh, element of machine learning where the paper remains or the, you know, the, uh, not the paper, essentially the document as it is created in somebody's system remains, a PDF comes in and we are able to extract the data and then push it into the larger ecosystem of the collaborative platforms. You also have the blockchain element of it, and I have, we have a slightly different take on this. Again, uh, uh, we're privileged to do the first blockchain between two countries for trade data. This is between Mumbai and Skipal, and which is basically looking at three levels of information which could possibly be exchanged as, you know, as trade flows. So first level was to look at just the statuses on one station. So whatever is happening, uh, per se at a terminal, whether it's in the air side or in the ocean side, that status. The second is about all documents which are essentially generated here, which could possibly be needed on the other side, and these are B2B document. And the last bit is around the customs documents. Now this is, uh, this is something which is very powerful uh, to look at, because you know, if you see, uh, somebody's exports is the other guy's imports. But unfortunately, in most countries, the process starts all over again. So whatever you do in exports is more or less lost till the time it gets to imports, and then the whole process has to start again. So if there is a way that the exports data, which is nearly 90% of the imports data, is essentially transmitted digitally through a secure channel like blockchain, I think it can be a definite game changer in terms of how the data information happens. And this is one request to customs as well to look at and I've been thinking for some time, one of the initiatives that we've seen on the passenger side and which could possibly happen on cargo side is, you know, uh, those of us who have traveled through Abu Dhabi to the US, okay, the pre-clearance for people happens in Abu Dhabi. You know, you pre-cleared and you land on the US side in domestic. Now, if you can think about very similar cargo level pre-clearance, which is for exports and you can pick up a commodity or a particular you know, set of commodities, and it can happen from here, and the other side, it doesn't need a clearance. Think about it, you know, in terms of how technology could possibly play a part in that, okay? And that obviously would be a big boon to the Indian export cycle. Uh, then obviously there are connected communities. We've spoken about this today, uh, for that matter, on the air cargo side, there is the, India's going through a revolution Several airports essentially are essentially embracing this as part of their strategy, and we've been privileged to honored to be part of that. And obviously then enables the, you know, the lowest denominator, which is the smallest of the providers, to be able to do the same job that the large guy can possibly do. And then you know, have sustainability and paperless as an initiative, and the, the kind of trees that it can possibly save. And again, Mumbai is a good case example where or the number of, you know, the paper which is shaved is equivalent to about 1,500 trees in a year. And then obviously you have the data and going digital. So the whole data backbone as it comes about and how you essentially organize the data 
and, and slice and dice the data and use artificial intelligence, use simulation, use forecasting, you know, that can obviously present something as a picture which is transformational in nature. And uh, you know, during the COVID times, again, uh, uh, a practical example was pharmaceutical shipments and tracking them right from the time that they leave the, uh, the exporter's premises up to the point they are obviously onboarded to the you know, flight. So uh, if I was to just do a crystal gaze and look at the fact that what is happening currently and what possibly will happen in five to 10 years time, I think this is what it will be. From manual to semi-manual processes, I think we will all move towards digital connected ecosystems. Uh, the, the whole idea would be that you know, we would be able to track and trace everything. AI would be obviously prevalent. Wherever there is a chance for uh, title transfer to happen, where obviously you need that, you know, blockchain could possibly play a part. And then, all said and done, the data backbone that comes up will throw up data which could possibly be utilized in several ways. And if this is to be drawn, then this is possibly what it looks like that between exporter and importer, there could be marketplaces which would work, you know, and, very, and these marketplaces would then enable, you know, rates to be obviously exchanged. You will have between the, you know, the exporter, the forwarder, transporter, carriers, et cetera, all of these guys at different levels would possibly be using technology. And then within the terminals or the air cargo terminals, you'll have a lot of robotics uh, per se, which will come through. So thank you so much. As, as I promised, I've kept it you know, uh, in sh short and sweet. Thank you so much for this. Thank you so much, uh, Vineet. I'm sorry for pushing, but uh, uh, I would request uh, Mr. Nataraja to sum up. I again request uh, everybody to, uh, they, we have no time for the question answer session. However, we assure you that every question of yours will be, uh, you will, will be answered. Uh, kindly post the question to Mr. Nataraja and the Secretariat. We will compile it and we will get it from each of the panelists. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you, sir. There are three questions uh, raised by the members. One is relevant to the sessions two, raised by me, Mr. Mikhir Badgankar to Mr. Andrew Simha, stating that how do shipping lines view Independent digital freight platform. He is asked the question. How do shipping lines view independent digital freight platform? From a technology perspective or from a yeah, commercial technology, technology perspective? Oh, I think that's great. I think it's great because you know it's like in many aspects when 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 you have um, a small company or a startup. Uh, they can develop things very quickly. They don't have all the legacy. They don't have all the, the issues behind that. So I think I'm very much in favor of, of that. Then if they manage to make their business, that's, you know, that's even better. But I think it also helps us to understand where we need to put the focus um, on some of the uh, offerings that they, that they give. So yeah, positive view. OK, thank you. There are other two questions. Uh, thank you, uh, Nataraja, but uh, what the question answer will be answered separately. So you just sum up, and uh, we will just give the gifts and uh, I mean the presentations of other things. So yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Chairman. Uh, today's session is about the digital transformation from the present era to next era. As uh, our the first speaker, Mr. Vital Raj, is uh, clearly spoke about uh, how today and uh, what will be in the tomorrow, how we are all transmit uh, our goals to the new era. Thank you, sir, for your uh, elaborate uh, view. And uh, I come to Mr. Andrew Simha. It's a long presentation. Uh, we come to know about uh, many new uh, implementations on the uh, digital transmission. Thank you very much for your uh, elaborate uh, uh, presentation on to our members. And uh, I am, we all know about our Mr. Anandji, uh, the new idea about the uh, customs implementation for the present and future. 
transmission of the ease of doing business, we will note it, sir. Then we all already geared up to line up with the uh, customs perspective. Accordingly, we will gear up ourselves and coordinate to customs for enjoy the ease of doing business. And finally, our last speaker are viewed about a, a long presentation. Uh, we are all knows an off way, but your presentation give some more clarity to us. And accordingly, we will follow up the, your ideas and any specific uh, questions we will raise to you in personal window. With this, I thank all of you for the wonderful session. Even though it's a, a tough time for uh, lunch time, all are here and uh, viewed, uh, heard about uh, all four uh, eminent speakers' presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. I hope you all had a wonderful session. Once again, I would request, ladies and gentlemen, just give a big round of applause to all the dignitaries. Thank you so much for your valuable time. I would request Mr. Ramakrishna to present a memento of appreciation to Mr. Vital Raj. Can we join your hands together once again, please? And I request Mr. Ramakrishna to present a memento of appreciation to Mr. Andri Simha. And again, I request Mr. Ramakrishna to present a moment of appreciation to Mr. R. Anand. Can we give an applause, people? Thank you. Can. Can we request Mr. Ramakrishna to present a moment of appreciation to Mr. Vineet Malhotra? Thank you. This business session was sponsored by Team Global Logistics Private Limited and lunch, following the lunch, uh, session sponsored by Container Corporation of India. So can we give a round of applause to both of them.